Put it right in the drive through so you have to stare at it for 10, but for however long the dumb ass up front is not able to take your order, long. you have to, long. long. And this one is long, as this one is only morons for some reason. Well, there's a Starbucks in Hollywood, and they just take all the top talent and dump the garbage humans into the drive through at this other Starbucks I'm talking about. It's a side street, like technically. It looks like it's, it's off a of main street, but it's kind of on a side street. Who would go to a drive through Starbucks in Hollywood? What do you mean? Mm-hmm. It's right there, though. That sounds miserable. The well, yeah, but it's yeah, yeah, but it's too parking because parking in Hollywood park, sucks. Because yeah. the the alternative, you, if you go to a good coffee place, you got to park, go in. So you sit in a car for that long and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, <we're, we're, laughs> yeah I mean, that was you <laughs> asked. That's the dumbest point. Yeah, sit in the car. Like, would you rather? I like to be out. About. Oh, I, I mean, I know. Essential. I'm seeing you. I'm looking at you. I, I see you. It's, it's, you don't need to tell us. I like to be surrounded in walls at all times. <laughs> yeah, I want to have a car in my car so yeah. I can sit and wait in my hand. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, so, and I think I know what I'm going to put on the billboard, which I'm not going to say. Okay. But I got it. I got okay. my eye. I got my eye on that billboard. Uh, the second update. Let me get Steve in the news. He's, I know he wanted. I know he had something to say about it. But Dustin. God bless Dustin. He finally pitched a bit. Oh, he did? Yeah. All right. He's surprised, too. I don't know. I was surprised, too. I, I didn't think he'd ever do it. Yeah, I was surprised. It's the craziest thing. Hey, Steven, are you there? Hey, what's going on, man? Hey, what's going on, man? So I don't know if I hey. should read. I have Dustin's bit that he pitched to Reddit. We all, we know that uh, Dustin, this guy who would call into the show from, from the Facebook group, um, he's, he's got a lot of hate. On, yeah, uh, yeah, and you know, I, I just gotta say, uh, it seems like everybody has forgotten the aftermath of bonus episode eight. You know yeah. what I mean? Like there was a time when, uh, th- maybe unjustly, people were like pulling Patreon money from you because they hated Dustin so much. Uh-huh. And now I go on Facebook and Reddit and I see people supporting him and saying, "Wow, Dustin's so awesome! I can't believe he was so great, you guys! <laughs> Look at this genius thing that he's doing!" And I'm like, "Hello." Are you the same people that were going to revoke your support people. of the greatest podcaster in the world? Short memories. <laughs> Short memories. Yeah, you left so memory. But the thing is, I never forget a grudge, all right? Uh-huh. I never let anything go. Oh, I am going to hold your feet to the fire on this I and think keep you true to your I words. Do? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. Dick. <laughs> Anyway, you want to have about, to have yeah, a boxing match, are we? That's how we settle things on this show now. Yeah, everybody so, just okay, boxes well, somebody each other. <laughs> yeah, so somebody somebody actually recommended or proposed they put my name and Sobash's name in a hat yeah. to say, hey, these, this will be our representative from Reddit to fight Dustin. All right. And although I, I would agree to that if I was invited, if I was nominated as representative of Reddit, because I'm like Justin, I'm not going to fucking nominate myself and say, okay, I outright represent this community, even though they never chose me. Do you, think it was, do you think it was fair that, that I the task I gave Dustin to pitch a bit to Reddit? I mean, do you think it was a good, do you think it was a good idea? Yeah, I, do you think it was a good idea? Or should I, I just I think it was fair in the thing? sense that uh, it was impossible, and so I knew that when you pitched it, okay, great, we'll never hear from Dustin again. And he even said, uh, okay, well, this is my last time on the show. But well, that said, I know he's capable of doing this, but the, I think that's a, it's a it's a, a false question because the question is should he be doing it you know like should he be allowed on the show in the first place my personal opinion is no but why not I you know I am not the first person to bring grievances against him yeah. I, I did my homework on this all right so I sat down all week since you invited me to come on yeah and I collaborated with some of the top minds in the dickhead community okay. to put together a list of grievances against Dustin and build our case to why he, he's not a bad guy. I mean, you're proving I mean, my point of why he should be on guy. the show, yeah. but yeah, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, he shouldn't be on the show. Yeah, so anyway, what, but I was, what I was going to say is, uh, rather than fighting, because uh, Asterios is already doing that, and yeah. you know, Dustin and I, it, it would be like watching um, two autistic people from that guy's movie fight. You know, it wouldn't be that interesting. Okay. I want an intellectual match. Okay? Yeah, so that so I want an intellectual him. match. That's so I want to debate him, right, in, in a topic of your choosing. Or, since I'm a mod of the Reddit guns, uh, we could just have a duel. 
I would wait a minute. Do you live close to Dustin? I don't know. I don't know where he lives. Well, he was at the and he was at the Philly show. He lives close to he lives close to Philly. Mm-hmm. What quadrant of yeah, I, how many Delta you know, flights I, would you have to get kicked <laughs> off of to get to there? Yeah, I told you in the I told you in the past one in the south, so that's not gonna okay. work for me. Fuck, because I was thinking you could have like a paintball gun duel or like a laser gun okay, duel that might like exist. That. That'd be a real duel. Uh, well, look, I think I like that he's pitching bits to Reddit. Um, it's, a, you know, it's, it's a great thing that we can deconstruct and say, uh, you know, hey, you know, no offense, man, but you're not that funny, so maybe you. What uh, if, I mean, what if he just happened to strike gold out of the park? I mean, and like, park. could you be, could everybody there be? Intellectually honest enough and yeah, like, be yeah, honest with their fine. funny bud to go, they you know what? That's fucking funny. They yeah, gave yeah, him he, the he best that. I mean, criticism. His, uh, all right. The his, best his, feedback his, I have ever seen from any like you I have been pitching and trying to do comedy for ten plus years, and I have never seen as organized and and uh constructive feedback as I saw from Dustin's first pitch on Reddit. So okay. then what's Oh yeah. What what are we talking about? It sounds like this is a totally doable task. What we're talking about hubris, man. We're talking about he, a man. Is, he's he's capable of it, right? Like his uh, his bit he did during the Trump campaign. I I loved it. We we all loved it. I mean, there's people that will shit on it because it's cool to shit on Dustin. Yeah. But honestly, it was good stuff. And that's you know that's not really the point, right? Yeah. Like the point that is, was pretty is he right? capable of doing this? Yeah. It's, should he be on the show, all right? Yeah. And I just think that he's beyond redemption. Like, he could cure cancer, and I'd be like, sorry, dude, you're a great doctor, yeah, but what don't want you makes a funny dick show. show. <laughs> like, man, we're not talking about something boring like curing cancer. We're talking about making a funny bit for the show. If you cure <laughs> cancer, I guarantee no one laughs. Yeah, that's not funny at all. It, it would have been funny, but, yeah, Dustin, uh, would be, would be cringy. Oh, that's the worst, man. That's the worst word that you can get hit. When I did the Gavin interview, I, I was just, after it, I was on the thread, F5, F5, like, please don't call me cringy, please don't call me cringy, because there's nothing worse than that. Like, I'll take try hard, I'll take, I'll take any of the other words, but if I get hit with a cringy, I'm going to die inside. Please, 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 please oh, F5, yeah. F5. And the thing is, I mean, I, I've used that word to describe this one before. I've used that word to describe myself. I'm cringy as fuck, man. I'm an internet personality. I don't know if you know what that's like. But uh, he legitimately doesn't understand. This is one of my list of grievances. I have a Maddox style Wikipedia article of Dustin let's, grievances let's, written up. Let's, well, let's hear your top three. Give me your top okay. three. Yeah, sure. So basically, my point is that the, the ultimate point to take away from this is that he does not serve a valuable purpose on the show. And the, okay. what I will cite is. He's uh, interesting, is though. He's an interesting uh, guy. He's, first, yeah, of all, he's I mean, first of all, he's extremely supportive. He, he controls the Facebook, like he did all the Facebook group shit. I love yeah, him for that, but he's, very, he's you very interesting. Have, you have so many fans that you make more than $20,000 a month on Patreon. Like think of how many qualified people that you have that can do all the things that he does. But like what? You, you see what I'm saying? Nobody Maybe can like, be like, okay, so, Dustin. You can't pay somebody to be that interesting. I don't think he's interesting. That's That's kind of a strong word for him. I mean, <laughs> Okay, what's your... Go, I'm sorry, okay. I interrupted you. So, basically, if, if you recall from the old show, and, uh-huh. you know, a certain someone still does this on their show, I hear, the the best way to present the questions Chang. is <laughs> from from you, you know, you reading the questions or you playing the voicemail, that's something yeah. that started really organically on The Biggest Problem, because back then you guys started... Oh, but I had to argue... You. I had to, that getting voicemail on the show and putting a voicemail number up on the biggest problem was such a fucking pain in the yeah. ass, a monumental pain in the fucking ass. Yeah, but go ahead. It, it, in that case, it's you, the host, who is presenting it. You with the personality and the charisma and everything. But if you just oh. have a random fan doing it, it's not someone that was selected for their on-air personality or their skills in being an interviewer or presenting. Now, okay. Dustin has shown that he can be a good interviewer in a comedic setting. He's great at it. He is. He's yeah, great at it. On the yeah. show. On the yeah. show, on it show. doesn't work for people, okay? okay. And that's a, a lot of where the cringe factor comes in is that he tries to have banter with you guys, and it just doesn't mesh. You know, it doesn't really work. Well, you know, know, we don't, know we've known each other our whole lives. 
John and yeah, basically. So that's a, that's a that's tough. That's a tough sell. But I think I think what you're saying is uh, I'm not gonna blame Dustin for it. But the bit has it, it has the, the questions from Facebook stock. I would like it to evolve because I like the question. I love the Facebook involvement part of it. Well, that. my my proposition would be he could continue to gather the questions on Facebook and then send them to you before the show or something. Or on I think a random person whatever. from Facebook should read them every time. You're still, it's a lottery of, uh, or, you know, you're, you're, you're flying blind in that. Like, what if they're just horrible on-air personality? They're not all going to be like me, man. They're not all going to be hilarious with great charisma and just a joy to talk to with okay. wonderful dynamic range. That's true. Maybe you should read them. I don't want to assert myself because then I'm no better than the person that I'm criticizing. Uh, he wants an invite. <laughs> I'll think about it. Yeah, see, much like uh, much like Maddox, you were talking about what uh, what you know disorder you think he has. I don't think he's autistic. I and I've raised this to you before. Think he is a narcissism, which I am. A, you are a narcissism diagnosis. Oh yeah, I can see you one from a mile away, buddy. You're actually you actually have a narcissism diagnosis. It, well, yeah, it's called narcissistic personality disorder (NPD). Oh no, and, fucking uh, way. There's a list of criteria, and I mean, I'm not you know. I don't want to claim to be any kind of expert or doctor or anything, but in my extremely unofficial opinion, yes. In your extremely unofficial yeah. opinion, what? And you are actually medically diagnosed with this. And you accept that uh, diagnosis? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What do you mean I accept Yeah, yeah, it no. sucks, because the, the hard thing about it is uh, a lot of therapists won't treat people that have it because it's so hard to treat them because they won't come to terms with it. And, you know, it took me oh. going through a whole lot of shit, it's like, uh, you know, divorce and all that stuff. But uh, wait a minute! I want to talk to about it. this. You okay. you got medically diagnosed with diagnosed with NPD, narcissistic personality yeah, disorder. Yeah. Like what? Well, yeah, right, and you think that, and because of your diagnosis and the things that you've seen Maddox do, you think he has it too? Yeah, yeah. Because I mean, like for me, it's it's even painful for me to read the Wikipedia article on it because I'm you know, your brain is so in denial about it because what like, is the narcissist? It? The universe literally revolves around you. Like, Everyone children start off that way, and usually they grow out of it by, like, age 12. Uh, Narcissists don't. You just stay in that forever. And you, whoa. you know, it's the kind of thing where you, that you see with antisocial people, where you, uh, the whole lacking empathy thing, like, yeah. it borders on almost evil territory, because you truly cannot empathize with other people, or their feelings, or feel genuine remorse, or anything like that. And I think that, that just like, what's it. an example? Would you come at someone real hard if they if they screwed with your worldview at all? Like, I if you were gonna say, would you <laughs> come if you saw somebody like hit like, by a car? No, like, <laughs> like if you saw. Uh, okay, don't like, don't, like, don't like, knock my hard. Um, why do you start a sentence with would you come? Would you come at someone real hard? In other words, if somebody <laughs> yeah. like like a narcissist will anything that upsets that worldview of theirs. Like this is how I see myself. This is that's how true, I hold myself. Yeah, if so somebody um, dares there's... question you on it, you'll come with both barrels, right? Yeah, and there's a doing. phenomenon called narcissistic rage and narcissistic injury. When the person is forced to challenge their worldview, they react sometimes very violently or unpredictably. But yeah, it's, oh. no, they will double down on, oh, yeah. on something. It doesn't have to be true. It can be completely proven false. Doesn't matter. And they just flip out. Yep. Kind of fucking this is a them. person that is incapable of acknowledging their shortcomings, and when they're forced to. Uh, the results are completely disastrous. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's it's really horrible. Wow, they've got it around me. There's, there's three, and I, uh, if, if, <laughs> there's three disorders that are kind of like the Venn diagram. How much stuff he knows? If you want to see. If you want to talk about this, I, I find I want to talk about this. this. Yeah. He knows narcissistic personality disorder is one. I want to talk about this with someone who has like a human, for, not a troll for a throat. Yeah. There's narcissistic personality disorder. I'm right here, buddy. There's antisocial personality disorder. Okay. And there is uh, borderline personality disorder. Yeah. And they, yeah. they all share certain certain uh, points, bullet points. But yeah, that's the, true. The they're personality all, disorder part. Well, yeah. And yeah. that's like when you call somebody like a sociopath or psychopath, that's not a medical diagnosis. Yeah. Yeah, but an interesting thing about sociopaths and psychopaths is I, I was researching this recently because I was trying to figure out uh, if a certain person met it. I don't remember who it was. But um, they have to have, usually have to have one of these personality disorders. And the difference between and the, the sociopath and the psychopath seems to be whether or not they have violent tendencies. 
Well, and so some I'm people say, to figure out in my psychopath or sociopath, and I'm like, oh, I'm violent stuff, I don't even know. Some experts say there's no difference, one's a newer word for the same thing. Well, Others say that, that more, one is more likely to fly into a rage, one is more to be more or cool, or calm, and relaxed, like, like, like Ted Bundy any, yeah. is a classic yeah. psychopath. If What's the craziest cool? thing you've ever done, Steven? Right. Would mm -hmm. you say it? Like what, um, in one of these narcissistic rage moments. <laughs> I, I mean, I've, I've had a lot of like issues in relationships, I guess, because abandonment plays into it, much as it does with the other personality disorders that Sean, okay. that Sean mentions. Yeah. So it's the kind of thing where like, you know, when you get broken up with, it's like you're kind of incapable of, or, or betrayed in some way. When, you're, when yeah. your brain interprets Oh, it, really? Betrayed, a narcissist is always you, a victim. You, oh, the, a narcissist, there is no blame a narcissist will ever accept and no praise they will never take 100% of. So That's you'd true. like make uh, fake uh, rape apologist videos if you felt betrayed by someone. Yeah, and that's the thing. You could, you could dissect that thing as many times as you want to, which has been done, and it doesn't change the mindset of the person that made it. You're interesting are. because... Because Waterboy has had extensive conversations with Maddox trying to talk him out of that, trying to see what the fuck he was talking about with that video. Steven is very interesting because... See? Oh, I started rolling my I eyes did. as soon as he said, oh, well, like, I'm a narcissist. Well, don't thank him, because Dustin's interesting, too, though. Yeah, no, he's <laughs> interesting for different reasons, but it's, this is why, and I've heard people say this, therapists say this, they say most, most therapists will not touch anyone with one of these three personality disorders because really? they're as close to unfixable as you can get because they're so rooted in the core from when you're formed, from when you're a small child, um, yeah. that it's basically, it's basically unfixable. Oh, so, and so what, so they're paying for therapy forever? No, yeah, right. no, 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 they, they, they won't take it. Done. No, 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 they, they won't. Fucking right. No, 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 you're wrong about that. I'll show you who's uh, wrong, no. son of a bitch. <laughs> no, it's, it's, <laughs> it's, studying it is very, very interesting. All right, so what else, uh, why uh, else, yeah, what yeah, else I'll, is I'll wrong with us? Like, I know you, you know, I, I only have like a thousand lines of shit that I wrote, but sure, I'll just speed right through it. We got sidetracked. The news babe had to talk about Delta Airline time, I'm just kidding. So the I think hey, uh, what should chicks watch out for with signs that they might be dating an NPD? Yeah. Um, what are well, some I signs? Want, I want people to date me, so I don't know if I should really say, but. Uh, I've not dated an NPD before. Are we <laughs> watch out for? There's a scale for real. Yeah, There's yeah, a yeah, scale. Yeah. I mean, basically, somebody who tries to monopolize your time. And this is not just an NPD, but any kind of abandonment person. Okay. Somebody who like if they get upset that you're not talking to them enough. Or if they seem to be really impatient with um, you, you know, spending time with them, like, oh, why can't you hang out with me that day? You're hanging out with them that day, or oh yeah, man, a real man would never say that. <laughs> why, why aren't you hanging out with me more? Take all the time. Oh, 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 and get at it. Well, I got a little, I got a life-size cutout of me that I, I just post around my house and I sneak out the back door. So I know I'm not a narcissist. <laughs> take all the time, but no, take all the time. in the world. Uh, Sure, you don't have any more errands tonight? <laughs> One of the issues that I raised with you is that I think that Dustin is harmful to the Dick Show brand. Okay. And basically, so you have the two biggest communities for the Dick Show, Facebook and Reddit. Yeah. Uh, Reddit is run one way and Facebook is run another way. If yeah. you compare them, Reddit is, I'd say maybe like 90% of the time on topic to the Dick thing, which is how communities on Reddit are meant to operate, right? Like in the yeah. guns subreddit that I moderate, we are 100% on task with guns because we strictly enforce it. And if you go to science, it's even more strict, okay? Yeah. But on the Facebook group, it's more of, you know, it's more of a community, but people go there and it's been described as a dumpster fire because it is- Who described it like that? A dumpster uh, fire. I'll do it right now, It's, it's a fucking shit show. It's yeah. controlled burn. I, I, I hang out in there though. Yeah, I know too, but the thing is, is, is people join it and if they, if they aren't familiar with that place and they just want a place to go to to discuss the show yeah, or like the lore and the meta, yeah. it's kind of, it's a problem. And the way that it's run, you've seen some of the, some of the things that happened there. There's, uh, there was the whole, uh, break the tank situation. There was the well, whole that surprised guy, everyone. The I tell, I'm here, they, no, no, they, I'll, I'll tell you what the problem with that bit was. And this, this ties into the whole, this ties into the, the pitching Reddit bids and stuff like that. Um, the problem with that bid, it, when Dustin, when I first started talking to Dustin, he was, was gung-ho and helping out, and he has helped out with shit, and I love 
I love his support, and I think he's a great guy. Uh, he initially wanted to be a producer in some capacity. And I said, as I always say, yeah, go nuts. Let's see it. I mean, this is, this is all being pulled together. Like, I didn't go to podcasting school. I have no fucking, I got, this is, the, the show is now, is Asterios Coconos, a man who is famous for being on television in a bee suit, is going to fist fight a he modern... He was the girl in that Blind Melon video? <laughs> yeah. Asterios, who was the original girl in the Blind Melon, is going to fist fight a moderator of the Donald. Like, this is... Nobody knows what... Like, you want to be a fucking producer? Let's see it. We Let's... sat around writing that script all week. Yeah, well, yeah, right. We're like wrestling. We're like res wrestling with no script. This is what it's like. Guys screaming about doxing each other on Twitter. Um, but I, my attitude was, yeah, let's see it. So that bid from a producer side was get people who could be life coached by coach with the wackiest problems. And here's where here's where it fell apart is in the voting. Because yes. if you when you put something up to a vote, you get Bodie McBoatface. Mm -hmm. That's what you get. Never, never put it up to a vote. Yeah. Never. Voting, voting is a gimmick to visit the website, absolutely. Right. But voting because, is for real. Because it, it shows over and over again that bad decisions are made by groups who vote. I mean, because it's funny. It's funny to make bad decisions. Yeah. Like, I would vote for, but as a producer, you got to step back. And, you know who the fourth place guy was in that contest of get your problem Get life coach from coach. Uh, the fourth place guy who didn't get to call into the show was a guy whose problem was that his dick was so big he could never get all the way inside of a chick. I heard that. That a producer should look at that and go, Yeah, you're yeah. you're calling in. Right. You're absolutely calling in yeah. to talk about your gigantic penis. Do not do not put your faith in the votes of the people. Ever, and at least if like you want. call an audible. Yeah. But what we had was, you know, what we, everybody knows what we had. Everybody's listened to bonus yeah, episode yeah. Well, A. Everybody's I mean, seen the thing Kirk. Go ahead. Whoa, 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 whoa. Sorry, I, I was just going to say, it's kind of, it, it's indicative of the way he runs the group. You know, it's kind of a popularity contest between not celebrities of the show, but celebrities of the group, where he has, he's the, oh, he's the chief dickhead, and Chelsea's ah, the official yeah. trap of the I, dick show. I think that's all in good fun. But the, yeah. when it, when it crossed, when it became... Part when the producer gloves were not put on, and when the net when the when the when, so the very next day after that episode, it went up on Patreon, and people are like, "Fuck Dustin!" Dustin's on there saying, "I swallow your tears." And I'm like, "You can't you can't go on Patreon and tell people who are paying to keep this show up that you swallow that you swallow their fucking tears." Like, okay, but, but wait a did. minute, wait a minute, yeah. I got hold on, I got a problem with that. And then the, also the very next day, I got a pitch for Dustin pitched me a podcast that with him and Asterios. I'm like, okay, wait, pause. You cannot, you cannot run the worst PR in the world and also want like you can't do it the next day. You can't be wanting to pitch the show. Like, take a minute and trend. I'm not blaming anybody, but you gotta. We're all pausing here. It's like we dropped the piano. The, we dropped the wedding cake. The wedding cake broke. Stop carrying the tray and look at what happened here. Well, it's, it's, like it's, it's, you're tracking like... wedding cake all over the house because you won't stop <laughs> running around. Just pause for a second. Look. So my my thinking was in this bit. Look, you want to be a producer? Produce me a sandwich. Produce first. me a fucking bit. <laughs> produce me a bit, and this will be good for everybody because you. You cannot be a bad guy. You cannot be a bad guy for just the sake of being a bad guy. You like they, that's not no, that's not that's not good. Yeah, that's a personality. And it's easy. But he to doesn't understand. He doesn't understand why he's a bad guy, though. I, I talked with him at length about this, which is actually why I'm on here in the first place. Because he was like, "You should uh, bring all your grievances to Dick, you know, because I think he'd want to hear this." But yeah. He, he doesn't understand what he's done wrong or why people don't like him. Or, you know, or just why they don't want him to be a part of the show. Like, I've talked to him on other podcasts or just on Discord, and I think he's a great guy. Like, he's yeah. fun to talk to. He's nice. But 
you know, like, if I, outside looking in, it's probably the way people view me. They don't want me on here either, because what, you know, who the fuck am I? What am I contributing? It's you the know, same kind of, there's yeah. a lot of, that, it's very easy to see the negative parts of everything, but I think, I think you're very interesting. Okay. I think Dustin's very interesting. I think I want to see, and I want to see what happens. That's all. Okay. You know, he could, he could disappear. I'm just thankful he's around, because I like watching him. Like, he's got a lot of energy. Yeah. I like seeing well, what I'll he creates. With, um, okay. I have I have a quote from a from a redditor that I interviewed about Dustin. This is um, user SG Dove who did the brilliant interview uh, bit today on uh, on Friday. Well, but he didn't I film it. Some to. So SG this, yeah, uh, yeah. SG Dove SG Dove from Reddit. This guy on Reddit. He says I'm gonna go do. Uh, the interview bit, man on the street, better than Dustin. Give me some questions. So I wrote three jokes, and he goes and does it. And God bless him. I'm, it's great that he did it. And reading the responses is funny. Yeah, he thought he was like, going to well, get arrested for wiretapping. <laughs> okay, <laughs> Dustin. Dustin would not not videotape it. He would just get arrested. This is this is what I'm saying. This is the big. This is a very important part. Is that. Dustin got the video made. That I got some content to play. Dustin will always come through. Like I can forgive anything if I get the product. You know what I'm how, saying? Okay. How can you say he'll always come through when he he failed to collect questions at the live that, show? That was he failed to hold the microphone steady. Uh, he failed to not uh, fucking interrupt a stereo. How he failed at the new. That was all hilarious and funny. But, oh my God. but he, what I didn't even know was that he was running around like crazy trying to get the professional the shots, video shots, the right? shots yeah. Okay, which I didn't even know was happening. Thing, so. that you don't need him for that. Like, you have so many people who are your fans in this industry who, who are qualified to do it. Or you could just fucking hire someone with the stacks and stacks of money you have in the bunker, man. You, you don't need Dustin for it. Keep him around as a Dwight Schrute. You know, oh, but you don't need him to actually do important things for the show. I need those stacks of money, though. <laughs> Keep them the house level. So SG Dub told me, he, he, he gave me a nice, like, a nice quip. Yeah. He says, the major problem with Dustin is okay. that everything he does comes to an ass-grinding halt. <laughs> that it ruins the flow of comedy like polio ruins the flow of a child's ability to walk. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, okay, well, well, I, I think, I mean, I he, sh I think he should have the ability to defend himself, but he's got to get the bit proved. I can, I'm not going to go back on my words. Yeah, uh, okay. I'll defend you know, him. I'll defend him while he's not here, but he's. He, I think he. I think he can do it. If he takes the criticism, and I'll make this promise. Uh, you know, if he actually does something that I think is a good idea, I'll be mm -hmm. honest about it. You know, the bit he pitched, I, I didn't I think know it was you good. Will. The person, the top comment on the on the pitch thread had an idea that was like a thousand times better than his, and I was like, dude, you're the new Dustin. Congratulations, you know. And now we see the genius of the bit is getting other bits. All right, uh, this, Steven. That cannot be the bit. Steven, plug your yeah. plug your Etsy store. Yeah, I, was like, I love this pen. Uh, I can't stop fiddling around with it. '80s girl. So where did you get that beautiful pen? I said I made it. Uh, oh my God! You, uh, I'll, I'll allow it. I'll allow it. I guess that's that's part of what you pay for with my with my businesses. You get to you get to claim my expert craftsmanship as your own. I always used to but, tell uh, people just say your Dick Masters and go into the go into a bookstore and say that it's your book that you wrote it. Like. That'd be pretty funny. Just do it. I do have the mustache and the shades. So. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I make, um, I make, you know, like wood and and that kind of thing, like crafted stuff. Uh, my shop is called Dogwood Handcrafts because I'm from the south. There's dogwood trees. And I like dogs, and I like wood. And um, so I do uh, fancy pens, like the one I make for Dick. I do like fancy bottle stoppers. I'm actually an official craftsman for the U.S. Uh, Military Academy, where my brother's Whoa, going to what? school. What does that mean? Yeah. Uh, so I basically what it means is uh, rather than ha I'm, I'm like licensed to put out a, um, stuff that is branded with the U.S. Army or the U.S. Military Academy. Oh, cool. So I make stuff for the parents and the families and everything of soldiers. All right. And uh, very cool. And then I do a lot of shaving related stuff because I uh, I'm a blacksmith and no I fucking uh, way. Yeah, so I make, uh, I formerly made uh, razors, straight razors for shaving, and now I'm focusing on my uh, my brushes, and then the other thing I'm focusing on, I didn't tell you about this, but I thought you might get a kick out of it, I've been making handmade 
uh, dildos and butt plugs, like sex okay. toys. And then my yeah. roommate, cool. who's my my, my, my I, roommate, I, she I was knew this was gonna to take a fucking twist. I was see Lacey's reaction. Next thing you know, there's fucking there's twenty she, furries in a house. That's the first thing that popped in my head. Yeah, I was like, he's going to say it. Lazy yeah. slid yeah. right off. So my roommate, uh, <laughs> slip and slide. My, my roommate, who is my co-host on our podcast, I don't know if I'm allowed to plug that too. Go nuts. I, uh, we started off as a way to get David Clegg a girlfriend, God, and censoring. obviously it didn't work. And so now we're just yeah. trying to help uh, random neckbeards. Uh, parts from the dick show community. Wait, open. you're making and wooden dildos? Not wooden, no. These are acrylics that I, I cast. Like, I mix the plastic, I put in the dyes and all the different colorants, and then I cast it in a mold, and then I shape it and everything. Okay, so my roommate so... will actually use them in herself and sell them to horny guys on the internet, and then we split the money. Used, you're selling used dildos? Sure she sells her underpants, and then she'll that. include, like, a sex toy with them. What do they, what do the guys do with the used dildo? Um, they like to, like, taste it. Oh, wow. How many of these does she taste sell? It. How um, know that this existed? We, I mean, that's a great uh, business opportunity. Yeah. It's I, better yeah. than dragging icebergs around the world. Easier. I'd say between the two of us, between the two of us, we're pulling at least 500 a week, and, you know, we both have real jobs, so this is just Oh, fun. my God! Trying to be more Does she send um, a picture list. off with the dildo? Yeah, yeah, she'll send you a picture and a video of her using it if you pay extra, and then like the she clothes. She needs more money for this. And... What so... do you mean? <laughs> she needs to make more money. Five hundred bucks a week. Oh, they look fucking unionized, and then no one will be able to afford to <laughs> Yeah, so yeah, if you want to check out my um my my very nicely made uh, okay. dick. Dick is a big fan of my stuff, so hopefully other people like it too. It's, well, um... I, was a, I was a fan of the first stuff. I don't. <laughs> Yeah, I'm well, a big fan. You, you, you endorse me, um, so you can't, can't take that back. Can't take it back. You're right. I'm not going to disavow it. Yeah, I can't disavow it. So it's uh, Etsy.com slash shop slash Dog with Handcrafts. I'm also on Facebook under the same name. And uh, I do custom orders, so if you don't see something that you like, you know, tell me the colors, materials, and all that. And I obviously don't list the sex stuff on there because I have like, stuff for families. But uh, Okay. You know, Where can I get the sex stuff? Yes, I mean. Yeah, you guys privately. Okay, contact you privately. Yeah, so actually, yeah, a few, a few days ago, uh, we had a guy who didn't actually want my roommate to use the thing, and he was going to pay the same amount. He requested a, um, a bright pink glittery butt plug that he wanted to be two and a quarter inches in diameter, which is like... Is that big for a butt plug? Or small? I mean, just hold out your fingers the size of a Coke can. I got a Coke can in front of me. Yeah, That's imagine small. that going up your butt. Like bluntly, oh, wow. you know. so that was you know that was a lot of fun. I I live streamed it on my YouTube. I live streamed my shop, and so I'll be making the pens or the brushes, and then all of a sudden I'll switch to doing a dildo, and all the people watching are like, "Wait, what the hell?" All and right, I'll, all I'll right. Watch Steven, more I can't I can't take more than I get, you got to call back because I have gun questions for you though. But yeah, I can't take I can't take more time. I can't risk okay. where this conversation is going. Man, totally, Thank, not, totally understandable, but you know, you did ask. I did, I know. Thank you for calling in. Having me, I appreciate it. Uh, hope you feel better, Sean. Maybe, you know, try a cough drop. Hope you sound better. Oh, I feel a lot worse. Maybe, maybe, yes. maybe oh, a sparkly yeah. butt plug will straighten you up. <laughs> I feel fine. I feel fine. Maybe that's why he has a sore throat in the first place. I still have something. Uh, you I hung up. Get out of here. All right. Oh, I think that's all we got today. Yeah. Uh, okay. yeah. I have more stuff, but it's just uh, too much. How do you, too much. How do you top that? Uh, you can't uh, top uh, Stephen. He comes on and steals yeah, the show. Every it's interesting. Time. It's like just to touch on the narcissist thing. Like I mean, I'm since I'm not a psychologist <coughs> and I don't sit down with him, I can't diagnose him or not. But it's interesting. Like he doesn't. The stuff he's saying about coming to terms with it is like no narcissist you'll ever meet like it's and it's a spectrum and that's the thing like well they, but how long has he been at it though well you you're born when you're young that's the core of who you are no but how long has he uh, like oh, how long has he struggled with, i don't know i don't know all the you know what i mean up. and it's also it is a it is a spectrum i think in the uk there's a there's a 40 point scale uh one of the scales that they use and if you're about 25 or higher they say you diagnosed with it in the U.S., it's 30 or higher, so not everybody... How the fuck do you know yeah. those specific things about his scale? How do you I, know so many things? I love to read, man. I love to, I love to look at shit. 
I love this the house is I love clean, too. baby. Yeah, right. this okay. house well, is okay. clean. Well, I'm just probably reading the wrong thing. What do you read? What are you reading? Dude, I go down like the... I go down the Wikipedia rabbit hole all the time and link to link to link and then like go like, okay, well, what's this thing that they're referencing here in the, you know, in the bibliography or whatnot? I don't know. I just, it, it's, it's just, but you know what? I like to see videos of shit blowing up too, so. Okay. But, yeah, yeah it's, it's, mm, it's interesting. Lacey, you got a boyfriend? I'm just curious. No. What kind of, what kind of guys do you date? Get on that mic. Spectrum. Narcissist. No, <laughs> I have dated narcissists. Oh, awful. really? Mm-hmm. But, you know, like, that's... I had to cut him off real quick. Really? Yeah. He was like, oh, that guy's a genius. It's like, no, genius means something John, specific. I'm working here. What I know what you're doing. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everybody. This, I'm going to play this exit song. Go away. <laughs> oh, man, I had, a, I had a crank call. I'm going to play it next week. I got a guy doing crank calls now, dude. You do? Yeah, I'll play it for the 50th the fiftieth episode oh, next cool. week. Asterios is going to be here. Oh, man. Um... <sighs> This song is by Fingers Music, and you can find his stuff at, at fingers.bandcamp.com, but it's spelled with a F1 NG3 RS. What are you laughing at? How do you how the fuck do you spell Lacey? <laughs> fingers at Bandcamp. Yeah, fingers at Bandcamp. No, fingers.bandcamp.com. Bragging about how I get played. sending them to me. Oh no! Yeah. Oh, is it building up? Yeah, now I got, well, well I mean, is, is, is he building up? Is it like, I, just I don't know why them. you're not fucking... I just got them, Sean. I haven't listened to them yet. I just got a huge... This is the Lettuce Jones who's in jail. Yeah. Our friend who's in jail has been sending, like, go-betweens. His, his has been calling them from jail, and they're supposed to be sending me the voicemail. Who's they? What's the holdup? What? I'm not gonna look. I'm not gonna say oh. who because I don't want them to get less. Les Jones in prison for no, beating the hell out of no, someone. No. I don't want to get them in any trouble. None of them. I didn't realize that it was like a specific person who checks. Them. Should have been just one. That's the fuck. Mm, all right, let's make this the last one. Dustin's got to say. Not Dustin. Not Dustin. Do you think we're hard on him? What? Just. Yeah, this episode, do you think that was hard in any way? No, I think you were defending it. I think we were defending it more than I think Dustin serves a valuable... He has shown more initiative than I ever have for any me man too. in my life. Yeah, me too. There's a, there's a lot to be said about that. Yeah, a lot. We can learn a lot from him. Yeah. yeah. All right, see you next Tuesday. Dick that show. Patreon.com slash Dick Show. Presenting
Welcome to Dick. You need Dick, you want Dick, you love Dick, you got it. It's the show where everything is a contest. Come on, do you? Presenting Dick. Welcome to Dick. You want Dick, you need Dick, you love Dick, you got it. It's the only show where everything is a contest. Coming to you live from a mountain bunker in the city of failure. I am your host, Dick Masters, and with me as always, <sighs> Hello, Dick. Hey, what's up, buddy? Big day. Is it? 50 episodes, dude. Oh, that big day. 50 fucking episodes to help us celebrate. How quick that went. Did go fast. I know. Did go fast. My God. It went, man, it from... From the Cernovich episode to now feels like a blur. When was Cernovich? Oh, was like a, in the first ten? A blur of the pills. Teens? Like a big whirlwind of uh, pills. He was 18. He no, was no, 18. no, he was 19. Oh, Because wow. Cernovich came on to give me legal advice. Cernovich, oh. out of the kindness of his heart, came on this show to give me legal advice with my with my with my defamation case. Yeah. And every and Reddit shit all over him. Mm. I'm so rude. So <laughs> uh, for no reason. Reddit, so, uh, Reddit uh, and Asterios Coconos shit all over. Absolutely no reason. He told me that awesome new phrase, going boinga boinga on a girl's titties. <laughs> With us today is the unexpected guest. Did he say that? Yeah, yeah, yeah that's yeah. how he describes sexual assault. <laughs> hey, it's Asterios Coconos. How you doing? Hey, what's up, buddy? I haven't seen you since the Milan show. I know. Yeah. It's been, but it, that's been less than a month. After Actually, which he disappeared. Good. Someone. I was looking around, I was like, where is that loud voice? Oh, that's right! I literally... You disappeared after the live show. After I... you ripped, like, it was your moment. I know. You tore your pants off. Yes. You had 400 people singing the Santa, the, the worst, the worst designed Santa Chuck sing-along ever done with the words appearing like like a speed run for Mario Maker. But like he the, did move them up to the top because they yeah. were at the bottom <laughs> behind our chairs at first. So at, at Philly Road Rage, we projected Asterios' movie, which was the Santa Cut sing-along of uh, Maddox of and Chuck. Jingle Jules. Jingle of Jules. Um, and when we played it, the words were at the very bottom. So it was just, it was lighting. The, the words were on the chairs. We said, do it again. Yeah. Do, move it to the top. And let's do it again so we can see the words. But then when we get the words back, it was words flashing the instant they're spoken. <laughs> So I don't know why I'm supposed to know them now. Sam Paper wrote them. Also, what have you guys designed a lot of sing-along videos in your time? <laughs> it's my first ever sing-along video, so I didn't nail it out of the gate. So sorry. And I never will, yeah. which is why oh, I I'll always make it. fun of this. No, yeah. I'll get yeah. it. Never I've tried. learned how to don't, do it. No, don't try. No. Once, once you start making fun of something, you can never try to do it. Yeah. You can ne like, yeah. the second you start criticizing like, Oh, you how fucked it up too, and you saw me fuck up? Yeah. You're really You're a fucking a idiot. real fucking asshole. Because yeah. you can never criticize again. No. Didn't Roger Ebert try to fun. make a movie yeah. after yeah. criticizing well, be on the ballet of the dolls. Exactly. Yeah. Did it, was it getting good? No. Uh, no. It was a Roger Corbin picture. Uh, it's like a softcore porno oh, that he wrote. And it wasn't good? Uh, it wasn't. He good. wouldn't have given it thumbs up, let's say. Although someone's thumb did go up somewhere in that movie. Uh, but long story short, I've learned how to make a bouncing Maddox head. So the next oh. time we do it, there will be a bouncing ball and it will be Jordan's head. <laughs> All right. Uh, well, where did you go? You disappeared. I had to finish my taxes. None of that was a joke. I had until 3 a.m., because it's midnight California time, mm -hmm. to get my extension in, because I hadn't received some paperwork I needed until, like, the week of. Right. right. And I was busy writing things and doing things and finding a Santa costume and all this shit. What kind also, of, I forgot. What kind of comedian are you that you would forego attention 
for financial planning. Yeah. Like, I don't no, believe no, no, you. No, no, no. I think you were, I think, I think this is a convenient excuse. You literally saw the taxes on my computer. A little too well adjusted. A little too well adjusted for me. Anyway. All of a sudden, he's got a Patreon and a bi-weekly podcast. Yeah, a bi-weekly podcast. I was kind of bummed. I was like, oh, the stereos will be hanging out afterwards, too. I'm yeah. sorry. I'm but sorry. There was, like, hundreds of people I there. Guess, and you were in the back doing math? I like, was. And filling out forms? I was. I'm not still kidding. Still add up. No, it doesn't. I'm not kidding. I was. Well, I actually, but I believe it. Of course you do. Why would I make this up? Why would I make this You don't think I want to go party? I took the next day off work so I could get so goddamn drunk. Get so high on taxi. I'm literally in a hotel room like, my girlfriend's like, come on, you had a great show. Come on, I'm like, I can't. I'm doing my fucking doing my taxes. fucking taxes. Exactly. I think I can afford this hotel room. I gotta get this done. Well, also, Dick's paying for this hotel room, but still. Was it worth it? Did you get your taxes done? I got the extension done. Uh, so now fine. I have to finish my taxes by October. But next live right. show, I'm going out all night. Okay, good, good, good. Uh, I think we're doing Portland too. I, I want to do Portland and Chicago. As a combo, a double shot. shot, like one one after the other. Just get up close to those shots. Sounds great. Right. Let's do it. Yeah. Um, so come to both of them. I'm coming. Uh, Jamie Lynn Hughes, you know, uh, said after this. Like, well, you could have given a little lead time with the words on your sing along, but then again, it wouldn't be the pants stumbling, pants falling off, <laughs> drunk and shit show if that like that was the. The, the correct media file was mm. the brown M&M's mm. of the show. Like how Metallica would used to have like only brown M&M's in their writer. I can, I can give you the real story. Well, we all know, but you can't it's, 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 it's Van Halen. Oh, it's Van Halen, yeah. yeah. So if they showed up and, and there wasn't the brown M&M's, they would say like, oh, well, we have no idea what's been fucked yeah, up said, on the They said no, yeah, they said no brown or green M&M's. And it yeah. was because, yeah, because they had, a, they had like a revolutionary stage show. There were like three moving parts, there were pyrotechnics. All this kind of stuff, really dangerous shit that yeah. could be, you know, millions and millions of dollars. Very so, similar to yeah. the answer, yeah. Yes, yeah. the writer. So yes, if that was ignored in the writer, then they thought, fuck, what else might not have been? Yeah. So anyway, can you believe those twenty-five dollar pants didn't stay up? I couldn't believe it. You can't plan stuff like that. I found a twenty-five dollar Santa Claus costume, yeah. and uh, the pants were literally made out of felt, and they could not stop falling down. And when I tried to tear them, they fell apart so easily. But why didn't you find out that the pants were going to fall down before you came on stage? I kept telling you to make that nice little porn. Um, we got a big episode today. We got a big episode today. Exactly. We got a big day today. We have episode 50. Come on. Episode 50. We got a lot of, uh, a lot of special calls. Um, a lot of special audio bits that people send in. Reverend Scott sent one in. The phone losers sent in a prank call. All of a sudden, we're getting a lot of prank calls, dude. Prank calls. So my fantasy. Like, I... I love prank calls more than anything else. They're so no. fun. Yeah. Yeah. I'm getting a bunch of those sent in, so I'm going to be, I'm gonna be playing uh, the phone losers later today. And we got to talk about the fight. Obviously. Asterios Kokonos versus War of the Fan... Asterios, the sneaky Greek, the Minosian bull, <laughs> the raging Greek bull, mm -hmm. who will unleash a, a can of austerity all over <laughs> you. Who will send you into a labyrinth of pain. Not even austerity, not liberal. Liberals believe in more government spending. Conservatives use austerity anyway. We gotta talk about that. Um, Are you really gonna fight this guy? Yes. Obviously, I'm really going. Do you see the hat I'm wearing? This is, like is Nick. Yeah. this is a boxer's cap. I've seen them in movies. It's a trainer's cap. I don't it's know like what. I did Rocky. I'm wearing it. I went out. I bought the hat. It's, you gotta more than cosplay though. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you guys <laughs> actually fight a the guy. This isn't like dressing up for Comic Con. If you're dressing you up for Comic Con, is deadly serious. I think that's probably yeah. harder than fighting. Well, right here. Okay. here, look. Let me lay this out for you real quick. Do okay. you want to talk about this now or later? I, I want to talk about it later. I want to talk about it. Okay, I don't want to get too deep into it because we like to talk about the rage here. Because there's a very strict format. I'm sure. 30 minutes of rage, 30 minutes of. Of bits and jokes and then 30 minutes of bullshit. That's the secret formula. He kept the show alive for 50 episodes. <laughs> um, we got a big day today because we're doing a bonus episode right after this where I have got to talk about. Um, I, I teased it at the, at the Philly show. Oh, only, only because of stereos. I wouldn't have even remembered 
Yeah, the nuclear that, gas planet. Uh, so now, now I know what you're talking about. Um, but it's it's already. I have the nuclear gas bomb, and it was supposed to be a deterrent. And it's supposed it's supposed to be that my Doctor Strange love me and Armageddon the mutually right. assured destruction. The war to end all. And it's already right. been fucking triggered. And I will tell you this. I don't. I'm not going to talk about it this episode because a lot of people don't like uh, don't like a bunch of gas in the, in the regular episode. So yeah, we'll I'll talk about it in the, in the bonus episode. This happens. Just going to mention it. We'll talk about it in the bonus episode. Uh, 80s girl got called into. John again this week. Not again. She got called in. What are you talking about again? Because people are always fucking with. Well, look. Here's what I've heard. Here's what I've heard. Okay. Here's what I've heard. That 80s girl has had to go to people at her employment to tell them there are these turds orbiting me and they're fucking with me. I've heard that she's had conversations. That's not So this happened. She got called in. Nobody wants that. They never, it's like a we need to talk, but for work. They never, they never help you out. Like, they never give you the, hey, it's about this, even though, even though it wouldn't cost them anything. Like, their program, not to, it's like, you go by this, you do not tell them anything. We need to, it's like a doctor who won't give you your, any inkling of your test results over the phone. Yeah, why? Just give me, give me a taste. Like, don't call, if I go get an STD test, don't leave a message and say, call us back. Like, give me a fucking, give me a hint. Uh, or it, something like, give me, maybe sound a little happier than normal. It, it, if the answer is good, right? Like, hey, give us a, hey, give us a call back. Can't wait to talk to you. So then I say, oh, I know that's not AIDS because no one could can't wait to talk to me. Well, give me something. <laughs> Be a human being and give me something. You know what I mean? Lawyers. It's always because of the lawyers. Why? It's Why? Why? Whatever. They're assholes. They're all fucking assholes. At least make, at least say, like, it begins with a G and rhymes with Robin. Like, make it funny. Get some clues or something. Send a word jumble. Send me on a, on a national treasure style. Uh, if it's bad, send me on a quest. So at least I think I figured, at least I get the feeling that I figured out a puzzle. Yeah. When I find out I have gonorrhea. <laughs> or chlamydia. Right, at least send me out of the She gets called into the office. Um, apparently, someone called and filed a complaint against her. Filed a complaint, the same person had been calling uh, multiple, multiple schools. Filed the same complaint. And uh, I saw... Against different teachers? No, just against her. Just what, against she, 80s girl. But, had been calling multiple schools. Multiple schools that were in a similar, like multiple of the same name schools. Trying to find her. Yeah. And reporting her, because there's like, because oh, she's there, like, okay. the schools are connected. Uh, I got schools it. Are, those schools. It's one, like one business and it's just got it. Um, it, they've been filing complaints of that. And I saw the redacted transcript of the complaints. Thank God, a long time ago, we Things starts to turn shitty in this podcast ride. She, she uh, nipped it in the bud, she went ahead, she got in front of me and said, Hey, just want you guys to know that these people are talking about coming for my job. My boyfriend, they've done it to a bunch of other people involved in the show. This is what I just want to let, let you guys know, so you're not surprised. They've done it to me three times. To you? Yes. I have I've talked so is, I want to talk about this on the bonus episode. So full, but I, I just want to say that I looked at the transcript of the complaint. It's a standard question. Uh, are you a parent? No. Do you are you involved in any way? No. And the person went on like an outlandish rant about just you, you, making stuff up like, oh she shouldn't be around. It, she's crazy, like all these it's, it's a danger, you're endangering your students and they're like, well what do you like, what do you have? What's your connection? What's your... Yeah. And she says, well, uh, she's like part of this group that's been harassing me and my boyfriend. So the operator goes, well, what's your name? Well, the name is What's your name? And how can we contact you to follow the question? When I saw, the transcript I saw was Jessica Redacted Redacted. So I think it's time for the nuclear gas bomb. 
which we'll be talking about in the bonus episode. But I don't want to drag this one down. I'll just, I just want to mention it, because that's where we're at right now. That's where we're fucking at, where we are in a world where people cannot protect you from assholes. But I happen to know how to turn that into a house. That's it. That's all, that's all I want to say about it now. You, you want to add something to Stereos? It's, it's very, it's making me, it's really been fucking pissing me off this week. It's been pissing everybody off because you can't stop it. Yep. There's nothing you can do to stop somebody from fucking you over. And once it's out there, it's on the person to attempt to undo it. Yeah. And the links that you have to go through to go through this the, a system that is not designed to protect you. Yeah. There is nobody there's nobody out there. This is the fact, the sad fact of the world is that all of these cops to protect and serve, it is a fucking illusion. Because when you're getting fucked with, nobody is there for you. Nobody. Happened to me. Happening to her. Happening to Asterios. But I'm gonna try my damnedest to turn it into something. To turn it into something. So we're talking about it in the wrong sense. So go ahead. The only thing I was gonna say is this. There is absolutely no hyperbole at work here. This is absolutely happening. People are absolutely going after our jobs multiple times. Now, I know that people have contacted people that you work with. Three of us, this isn't a joke. This isn't being played up for podcast drama. This is a serious fucking thing. And if you don't believe us, go fuck yourself. <laughs> let's have some fun. Well, that, yeah, let's have some fun. We'll talk about it. Um, you're just making me a rage this week. Does anybody else have, I don't even know what to call it, it's like a spot on your leg that constantly itches, but it like never heals. Is this a, is this like a, I don't mean to be like the gross kid in class, but I swear to God, from sliding so much in baseball and doing so many fucking sports, I've got this spot on my knee, like the front side of my knee. That is this just it just constantly sometimes. Is it like an eczema? Or I don't know what it like is. Constantly? But it's driving me insane. Like it's like the strawberry that just won't go away oh. from baseball. I, I don't know. I don't know if this is I, I'm sitting there like trying to ignore it. I'm sitting there wearing jeans, trying to ignore this thing, like every once in a while I'm giving it a little scratch. I'm thinking, is this is this like the is this like some kind of stigmata from having played sports in school? that now I got this goddamn never-ending, everlasting strawberry on my knee for the rest of my life that won't fucking go away. That a hammer, like a, like a, like a splinter, and it's been going on forever. It's been going on forever. Does anybody else have this? Am I crazy? I don't have that. Well, thing. listen, I never played sports, and I don't have itchy knees, which confirms your theory. Yeah, This is a sportsman injury. I think it is. I think it is a sportsman's injury. Mm -hmm. Speaking of sports, I got really sick from the sports this week. Yeah, you did. Oh, yeah. You know what this is? Oh, I know, it's Richard, isn't it? Are you sure? Have you ever watched it? <laughs> yeah. I watched it's, it over here. It's it's the most addictive shit on the planet, man. Sure. It's the most addictive guy. Like, I will sit there. I have been sitting. I can't stop watching it now. Yeah. I can't stop watching these, like, face, these these guys who are as, just sitting there like mannequins. Playing the most impossible, ridiculous Mario games courses, Every, like, like, a, and like playing it obsessively, like an insane asylum. I just like I can't walk. I can't look away. I just have to have this goddamn thing on all week. It's driving me fucking crazy. I got sucked into Twitch. It, don't if you have not, if you're not on it, don't get on it. I'm not going to. You can't, Sean. You can't get don't away. Worry. You get so Don't worry about what I do. It's so <laughs> all of my problems. Like I'm instead of sitting there now, instead of sitting there looking to like for a video game that I'm gonna pretend to play for that I'm gonna spend fifty bucks, play it for three hours, realize it sucks, and then never go back to it. All I do is get on the I hit the magic button and I'm just watching people play. Watching someone else fuck up. Like watching a guy fail for the most frustrating part of these that that one level you can't fucking play. And then you judge him. And yeah. criticize him because you didn't do it. Yeah. 
But and you're not gonna try. It's great. Yeah. It's, it's the, the best part. It's yeah. the greatest Bring thing in a circle. It's the weirdest fucking thing ever. If, the, if all those, like if the NFL's ratings are dropping, yeah. the MLB's ratings are dropping, and they're just noticing it now, they are fucked. Because I'm watching that thing, and the only reason, like I, I'm trying to jump around games on it, yeah. the only reason I stay so hooked is because I know exactly what it's like to play that good of a Mario. You know what I mean? And everybody's growing up with that shared experience as a kid. Like they, they don't know, you don't know how to, I know how to play a Mario like the back of my hand. I know sports, like a, I played a lot of sports and it's yeah. like a, a little bit, like I, I gotta kinda jog my memory on the rules a little bit. But if they're, if they're worried about ratings dropping now, it's fucking done. Because that is, it is so addicting, just sitting there and watching this game. They're turning it in, like they're having, I'm watching two assholes race on a Zelda, on competing Zelda games, and they can't play with the sword. It's a no swords version. You're not allowed to grab the sword from the old man. You have to find a way to beat Zelda without using your sword. And two people are doing it simultaneously and competitively. And I see who can finish first. And I get it instantly. Like I'm instantly hooked on this fucking thing, but, Right when I turn the volume up, what do I hear? The most boring announcer on the goddamn planet, which is the same problem in sports. The driest, the mo the most, the guy with absolutely no fucking insight into the game, just repeating shit that he's saying on the screen. Drives me fucking, I'm sitting there going, you got a whole planet full of comedians? And you got the driest fucking, you got like, it's, it's, like you got Joe Buck. It's everybody pretending to be Joe Buck to right. make this sound like a professional esports, which it is not. And get rid of it. As soon as I turn up the volume, like, you gotta be fucking kidding me. You already got into, you already infected this with boredom. You already infected this brand new thing with this milk toast, watered down, inoffensive shit. You're on the internet. You can say whatever you want. And you're saying this? Get the fuck out of here. It's Give me something. They want legitimacy. That's the problem with it. They should do what poker does. Because in poker, you have a color commentator or two. My buddy Joe Stapleton, he's an amazing... He gets paid to fly around the world and make jokes at poker tournaments. They have really? A, yes. They have, like, a funny guy in poker. That's what they need for esports. These esports people, they want to be taken seriously. Oh, we have esports scholarships. Oh, we have this. Oh, the, the world finals of StarCraft are happening in Korea, and there's big money in sponsorships. Well, yeah, but you also need to be entertaining. Bob Euchre is so entertaining that he was a fucking Webster. That's how entertaining Bob Euchre was. Yeah. Bob Euchre was so entertaining that he was in Major League and a sitcom. You gotta find entertaining people. Yeah. Dick is absolutely right. You should be a fucking color commentator. I'm sitting there. Well, that's exactly yeah. what I want to be. Like, I want to... So, first of all, I'm sitting there thinking...
was this when I was in high school. Because mm -hmm. yep. this is all we did, man. It's like, where, these people are, Sean, these people's tracker of how much money they're making is spinning like the national debt. Like just bing, 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 people throwing money at somebody obsessively playing a video game, not even talking. Not even fucking talking. Like I'm sitting there going, where the, this is all we did. This was my entire teenage life. You're telling me we could have set up a webcam and then, like, and we missed it by like 15 years? Yeah. You've still got time. Because here's what you've got that these no, people no, 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 Don't even start no, no, with me. No, no, what none. the fuck are you talking about? Too late. Last night, I pitched a series to Dick called Dick Beats His Girlfriend. And the idea is that Dick, an 80s girl, yeah. will twitch all yeah, summer an long, call. and he will just fucking annihilate her video games, and she will rage quit and flip the fuck out. It's just a half hour of Dick triggering his girlfriend mm. on Twitch. Dick beats his girlfriend. I love this idea. Um, oh, by the way, not Webster, Mr. Belvedere. Sorry, Buck Nuke was on Mr. Belvedere. We were all... Yeah, that was um, Alex Karras, the football player, was on... Right, because Alex Karras was Greek, and uh, in Webster, uh, yeah. uh, 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 George Papadopoulos, that's why I call you call yes. him Yes, and was, uh, Alex Alex Karras, Karras, you was like, Mongo in uh, Blazing Saddles. Yes. So do you have, like, a Hall of Heroes for Greek? Yeah, and guess where Dukakis is? Number one, buddy. <laughs> I'm still deciding on whether or not I want my boxing jacket to read the sleepy Greek or, or Dukakis. Like a stereos to caucus Poconos, or stereos to sneaky Greek Poconos. I'm not sure it's gonna be on my sad box yeah. jacket yet. This is how fuck. By the way, do I have a drink here? No, 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 I don't. Oh, wait you a got, minute. You got uh, the, I have the hat. You got the hat. You, you're yeah, designing yeah. your your robe. I have my walkout music. I have my walkout music. It's gonna be jingle, George. Cut, 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 cut. More than band boys, it's a cut. It's gonna be great. What about the what, what else is missing? Wait, what? what about the train? Tron then? Yeah. Do you mean like playing watching Tron? I love watching Tron. Well, he <laughs> is the best. Brinsler! <laughs> Later he becomes Tron. I'm sorry, what were you saying? We've been talking and you've been talking. You've said that you are not going to train for this fight on purpose. Because it's funnier. Trump didn't train me. And now he's president. Yeah. Here's my plan. No, I'm absolutely not going to train. I don't need to train to be some anonymous keyboard warrior. I don't uh -huh. fumble fuck wherever the fuck. I'm gonna get my plan is to use this opportunity to gain all the way up on the Do you know how hard it is to maintain 230? It's real hard. Wait, what, what do you mean? To maintain 230. To keep pounds? it up at the level you're at? No, even to get down to 230. I have to limit my calorie intake to 3,000, 3,500 calories down. <laughs> but now <laughs> is that true? Oh, 3,000? Absolutely. You should see my calories. But it's going to be like Michael Phelps, but the opposite. That's like how Asterios trained for this fight. Yeah. I'm taking I'm taking the part about the Michael Phelps thing I love. My mm -hmm. plan is this. Become 400 pounds and become unmovable. This guy, I get the sense he's probably some little stick, son of a bitch. So uh, I've seen him. I know his dad. I have not seen him. I yeah. don't know his dad. And you know what? Here's what I've done. Except in a boxing match, from a guy who I don't know what he looks like, I don't know what his name is, I don't know where he lives, I don't know anything about that. This guy knows everything about me, but I'm going to fight him, and I'm going to win, and I'm going to be 400 pounds. No, you, you're not Butterbean. You have to Butter train. Butterbean? You have to Butterbean Butter are two, motherfucker! You have to train. Because you're going to get, you guys are going to, if you don't train, uh -huh. you're going to get out there and dance for about 20 seconds, and then you're both going to fall over dead. You you're both going to be too winded to throw a punch. You're going to have the last 20 seconds, too. <laughs> Thank you so much, Dick. I think you need, I think you seriously need to train. You right. seriously need to train for this boxing fight that's going to happen. Whatever. Look, I'm going to get to you. I'm going to... I'm I'm gonna throw the pound, that's my goal. If I make it to 375, look, you shoot for the moon, if you hit one of the stars, what are you gonna do? I'm gonna get in there. This guy's not even gonna reach me with his tiny little internet <laughs> rendered or fists. Come on now. I feel like this strategy is King Hippo based. Yes! Like, I feel like it's video game based. Well his pants do fall down. <laughs> they do! <laughs> but, are you gonna make that face every time he hits you? Oh. 
<laughs> also, I part of me will be flashing the whole time. Did you see how how hard it was to yeah. throwing your arms up and down? Got a little crab key. That's a not yeah. bad idea. A stereo, the sneaky grip, the cockies, the hippo. God damn it! Yeah. I love it. Good fight. Oh, you got